do you know how much I've actually, uh, how much capital I've invested in Bitcoin at this point, Raul? No. Three billion, three hundred thirty-five million dollars. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right. There is no second best. Okay. Bitcoin or no, Bitcoin. You do not sell your Bitcoin. In pursuit of wealth and honor in all vigor and to carve out a niche for their unique skills, many work hard in their journey with no compromises in their character and competence. Several notable men, to name a few like Peter Lynch, Dave Ramsey, Charlie Munger, Ray Dalio, they all did just that. People from all spheres, not just the financial world, look upon them as role models. Then on the other side of the coin, we do have men and women who have reached the pinnacle of success through competence, but not character. That character failure has been mended by their future success or words. This is the story of one such man, Michael Saylor. This man is one of the top three Bitcoin holders in the world. His company, MicroStrategy, one of the biggest publicly traded companies to hold 125,051 Bitcoins, at an average price of $30,200 per Bitcoin as of February 2nd, 2022. His obsession towards Bitcoin is crazy. He has been buying Bitcoin whenever there is a decent market correction. If you are here watching this video, and if you are into the crypto space, you might have already known this about him. However, his past, it's pretty serious. His success ride was on a bumpy high road. Though he was ranked in the list of the richest men in the year 2000, he did come under the surveillance lens of the SEC and passed through a disgraceful period. Now, after two decades, he is back to his prime again by investing heavily in Bitcoin. His life story is pretty interesting and amazing. Born in 1965 in Lincoln, Nebraska, his family is much related to a military background. As his father was an Air Force Chief Master Sergeant, Saylor spent much of his early years on various Air Force bases around the world. By 1976, the Saylor family finally moved to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio, the homeland of the Wright brothers. Saylor always topped in school and graduated first in his high school, serving as both the class marshal and valedictorian. He was enrolled at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, on a full Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps scholarship. While at MIT, he was an ardent member of the Theta Delta Chi fraternity, and it was there Saylor met Sanju K. Bansal, the business partner of his establishment, MicroStrategy. In 1987, he graduated from MIT summa cum laude and received a dual major in aeronautics, astronautics, as well as science, technology, and society. While at college, Saylor learned to play the guitar and fly gliders, but a medical condition prevented him from becoming a pilot. In 1987, he joined a consulting firm called the Federal Group Inc., where profound work on computer simulation modeling service was done for a software integration company. Computer simulation technology engrossed Saylor, and its application on public policy and business strategy paved the way for his thesis at the MIT Sloan School of Management which was called A Mathematical Model of a Renaissance Italian City-State, in the subject, System Dynamics. Saylor showed much interest in flights and completed a successful training as a flight officer at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. He was then commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force. After joining the Air Force Reserve Team, Saylor commenced his calling in consulting with full attention on building computer simulations that backs up strategic decision-making for companies like DuPont, Dow, and Exxon. The change in key markets for respective businesses was forecasted by Saylor's computer models. His simulations also projected recession by 1990 for several DuPont major markets. Launch of MicroStrategy By 1989, in his 24th year, he took a big step of launching MicroStrategy. It combined his passions for technology, use of computer simulations, and business strategies. Uh, MicroStrategy, we've been very fortunate, we've been focused, we soldiered on, and uh, we've always had a passion uh, to make the best software we could. And, uh, and as our competitors disappeared, we found opportunities. Funds from DuPont helped this dream of his, and his MIT fraternity brother Sanju Bansal was the co-founder. In its inception, it was involved in data mining, and then focused on business intelligence. 
A huge jackpot for MicroStrategy was when it won a $10 million contract with McDonald's to develop applications to review and analyze its promotional efficacy. Every item sold every, every hour of the day in every store in the world for every McDonald's. This multi-million dollar project helped Sailor to comprehend his company's potential to create business intelligence software that allows organizations to use their data for insights for market forecasting. It arose to dominate the diverse business world in enterprise analytics and mobility software by binding both geographical operating systems and client-server computing, bringing a revolution to business intelligence called Relational Online Analytical Processing, ROLAB. MicroStrategy grew steadily and then, in 1998, went public, NASDAQ ticker symbol MSTR. Its initial stock offering was of 4 million shares priced at $12 each, and on the very first day of trading, the stock price doubled. Accolades lined up for MicroStrategy. Saylor was named the KPMG Washington High Tech Entrepreneur of the Year in 1996, and Ernst & Young named Saylor its Software Entrepreneur of the Year in 1997. Further, in 1998, Red Herring Magazine recognized Saylor as one of its top 10 entrepreneurs. In the year 1999, Michael Saylor was the pinup entrepreneur and was featured by the MIT Technology Review as an innovator under 35. MicroStrategy founded Alarm.com, NASDAQ ticker symbol ALRM, which was part of the research and development unit in the year 2000. It was one of the first home automation and security companies. By the early millennium year, Saylor's net worth reached $7 billion, and he was the wealthiest man in the Washington, D.C. area, as per the Washingtonian reports. On March 20, 2000, an assessment of MicroStrategy's accounting practices led the company to declare that it would reword its financial results for the preceding two years. This episode had a huge impact on its stock prices. The stocks, which had a dramatic rise from $7 per share to as high as $333 per share within a year, fell $120 per share, or 62% loss, in a day. And the famed phrase, bursting of the dot-com bubble, was in the papers. You've witnessed some serious roller coasters. You saw the dot-com bubble blow up and burst before your eyes. What lessons have you taken away from that that informs your strategy today? I would boil it down to this stoic observation, right? You can acquire a thing, but you know, can you maintain the thing? And if you can maintain the thing, can you enjoy the thing? MicroStrategy in the US SEC. But there was more to the year 2000. After years of standing high, the US Security and Exchange Commission brought charges against the company, MicroStrategy, and two of its other executives for the inaccurate reporting of financial results in the preceding two years. Subsequently, lawsuits were posted against MicroStrategy and some of its executives over fraud dealings. In December 2000, with no acknowledgement of any wrongdoing, Saylor, co-founder Bansell, and the company's former CFO settled with the SEC, each paying $350,000 in fines. Another $10 million were settled mutually together by the accused executives in the disgorgement. An independent director was hired to guarantee all this monitoring compliance on settling with the SEC. Next, Alarm.com was sold to venture capital firm ABS Capital Partners for a whopping profit of $27.7 million in February 2009. Following this, MicroStrategy announced its OLAP services, and by 2010, it began to develop and deploy business intelligence software for multiple products. This sector was called MicroStrategy Mobile. It integrated analytics capabilities into apps for iPhone, Android, iPad, and BlackBerry. It eased the access without the need to reformat the data for different platforms. Then, the company grew into cloud-based services in 2011. This branch was called MicroStrategy Cloud. Among many of his bold moves, Saylor sold his first cloud-based interactive voice response service provider, Angel.com, to Genesis Telecommunications Laboratories for $110 million in 2013. On the other hand, in 2014, partnering with the tech giant Facebook, they introduced a new feature termed Prime, Parallel Relational In-Memory Engine. A month after reducing Saylor's salary from $875,000 to one dollar at his request, the company announced that it was to ooze out 770 employees in October 2014. 
Saylor has more than 40 patents of his marvelous inventions, in addition to being accredited as the inventor of relational analytics and also directed microstrategy into the fields of cloud computing, web analytics, mobile analytics, mobile identity, distributed analytics, and IoT. Now, Saylor's book, The Mobile Wave. Saylor authored his first book in 2012, the Mobile Wave, How Mobile Intelligence Will Change Everything. I think uh, if we take something as simple as a key, right? In the electromechanical world, a key opens a door. It's pretty clear that sometime in the near future, your smartphone is going to become a key. It was ranked number five on Wall Street Journal's best sellers list in the hardcover business books that year. It projected the impact of mobile, cloud services, and social networks on an all-inclusive realm. The political, educational, healthcare, and commerce, along with the rise of other technological giants, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, Facebook, and Amazon. It's expected that these transnational technology creators would assuredly disrupt the political and industrial realms, irrespective of borders. Next, the Sailor Academy Foundation. Michael Saylor is the sole trustee of the Saylor Foundation, later called Saylor Academy. In 2008, as one of the Sailor Foundation initiatives, Sailor.com was launched, which made free education available to all students. This website hosts close to 100 college courses, and it has free course materials from universities including MIT and Carnegie Mellon University that students have free access to with no restrictions like the admissions process. To date, over 1 million students have benefited from these free educational services. A strike at Saylor for his criticism on COVID-19 measures during the beginning of the pandemic. On March 16, 2020, Saylor's memo to all MicroStrategy employees, entitled, My Thoughts on COVID-19, conveyed that all the measures taken during the pandemic were, quote, soul-stealing and debilitating to embrace the notion of social distancing and economic hibernation, end quote. He also envisaged that the last option in the case of global life expectancy would only, quote, click down by a few weeks, end quote. He declined to close MicroStrategy's offices unless he was officially obligated to do so. The 3,000-word memo was seen for only a few minutes on Reddit, but was posted to the Washington Business Journal. Sailor's Sale in the Bitcoin Venture Considering various global macroeconomics factors, the depleting dollar health, citing declining returns from cash, MicroStrategy invested $250 million in Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. With additional investments in Bitcoin, it is noted that by May 2021, the organization had expended over $2.2 billion acquiring Bitcoin at an average purchase price of about $24,311 per Bitcoin. Saylor has had strong vocal support for this strategy, defending the move. It was revealed he held 17,732 Bitcoins purchased at an average price of $9,882 in October 2020. After nearly one year, in October 2021, he still had not sold any part of his Bitcoin purchase. 70% of MicroStrategy's shares are owned by Michael Saylor, and with that majority control, he dismissed concerns by observers that the substantial Bitcoin move is turning MicroStrategy into a Bitcoin investment firm. So now, what were and are MicroStrategy's products? MicroStrategy's latest business intelligence software release is MicroStrategy 2020, which includes enhancements to the vendor's hyperintelligence capabilities with an embedded analytics system with augmented intelligence and machine learning technology. The prior platform release, MicroStrategy 2019, revolved around three areas, transformational mobility for easier mobile application development, hyperintelligence, integrating Bluetooth identity detection and voice, and federated analytics, allowing extended connectivity to data sources and applications. The earlier suites of software, MicroStrategy 10, comprised of MicroStrategy Mobile, MicroStrategy Analytics, and Usher. Then, the MicroStrategy 10.10, which was released in December 2017, added the MicroStrategy Workstation. This uses business intelligence and predictive analytics to delve through large amounts of data and perform analytics on big data from varied sources, including Data Warehouse, Excel files, and Apache Hadoop distributions. Yet the unforgettable one was the MicroStrategy Mobile, which was launched in 2010 and was the software platform that integrated analytics capabilities into apps for BlackBerry, iPhone, iPad, and Android. It paved an easy way to access data without the need to reformat the data for a bunch of different platforms. And what is an Usher? It is an identity intelligence product along with digital credentials that implements a secure process to monitor and control the digital and physical access in organizations. 
This replaced physical badges and passwords with secure digital badges and indentured information based on user behavior and resource usage. It is built based on a three-factor authentication concept. One, out-of-band channels. Two, the time-limited codes. And three, the bi-directional public key infrastructure encryption. Sailor travels extensively to share his understandings of enterprise analytics and advances in mobility in the business and technology sectors. He communicates with diverse companies, organizations, and governments, and presents the future world of how MicroStrategy can implement business intelligence in a profound and safe way. So far, Michael Saylor has traveled beyond borders to more than 60 cities across 25 nations to share MicroStrategy's remarkable vision of business intelligence.